your squat sucks. How can we increase your squat strength for weightlifting? We're gonna show you a crazy in-depth way to fix your squat and we're gonna start right now. Think about that terrible feeling. You approach the bar, you're geared up, you sniffed all the smelling salts, you're blessing that terrible Linkin Park music that's reminding you of your middle school era, maybe even some Limp Biscuit. And you go to pull on the bar and it feels like it's 2,000 kilos. You have no idea why it's so heavy and in turn you realize the Fred Durst lyrics aren't helping you get stronger. There's something else that you need to do so that that doesn't feel like 2,000 kilos. Because in the end, it doesn't really matter. And in some cases, that really heavy feeling can be fixed by doing some heavy clean pulls or some heavy snatch pulls, maybe snatch pulls to target, anything along those lines, maybe even RDLs that's gonna strengthen that lower back, that's gonna help with those positions off the floor. But oftentimes, it's related directly to how pathetic your back squat is. This same individual will typically also get pancaked by a clean. We'll see this even within the front squat technique. They'll tend to dip forward. You know, they might lose positioning really easily. They might have a trunk that's not as coordinated with their upper back. And in turn, that's gonna lead to those bad positions within the front squat. And oftentimes, this can be alleviated by improving their back squat strength and their back squat movement pattern. And this is gonna take us to that technical aspect, okay? So if we have enough strength to hold these technical positions, because our squat strength is good, this is gonna help improve our overall technical execution. And that first key aspect with preventing the pull from feeling like 2,000 kilos is understanding the simple aspect of getting your knees back off the floor. That's gonna help keep the bar really, really tight. What does that have to do with squatting? What we can do is we can take this individual, and if we look at the back squat as 100%, okay, that's the number that's 100%. The front squat underneath that should be around 82 to 86% of that back squat. So if this individual is structurally sound as far as their squat strength is concerned, we can recognize based off of where their back squat is, their front squat should be around 82 to 86%. Now we can look down at the clean and jerk. Now the clean should be around 73 to 80% of their overall back squat, okay? Depending upon some limb lengths. If somebody has really, really long legs, that clean is gonna be a bit higher relative to their back squat. If they have shorter legs, it's typically gonna be a little bit lower, down around that 73%. And then that takes us to the snatch, which is gonna be around 60 to 68% of their back squat. So Someone like Jake Horse, two-time world team member who has one of the greatest American snatches of all time, who snatched 145 kilos at 73K body weight to win the national title in 2022, had a snatch that was over 70% of his back squat max, which is absolutely insane. Now, when we're looking at rep ranges and sets, okay, this is gonna be really dependent upon specific phases. If we're in a high volume phase, think about exposure phase, think about comprehension phase. I like doing anywhere from sets of two all the way up to sets of five. And then I really like doing crazy drop sets, like nine reps unbroken, 10 reps unbroken, anything along these lines. During these phases, we'll even use a concept known as myo reps, where we'll do a set of 10 and then a crazy cluster set following that. We'll have a video on that later. And then as we get closer to a peak, okay, so let's say we're during the ascension phase, we're during the summit phase, the realization phase, but mainly during the ascension and the summit phase, we will typically do a lot of doubles, okay, a lot of triples, and then we'll do a lot of drop sets of five. So that might be a time set of five, that might be an unbroken set of five, or it might be a five RM. And then finally, cluster sets are also fantastic for leading to a massive boost in your overall back squat strength. We have to remember that if our back squat what remains weak, we're gonna hold poor positions off the floor, and we're also gonna lead to bad positions receiving the bar. Typically, people who have that weak back squat can't hold positions past the knee, and then they loop the bar, especially within the clean. And so that's where we're gonna see a better transfer. Now, what are those specific exercises that are gonna help you boost your back squat? Now, that first key exercise is going to be a double bounce squat. And this could also be a double bounce front squat. This is gonna be a really, really good way for you to learn how to get out of the hole when you get pancaked by the clean. And typically you would do double bounce squats like six doubles, something like that. 
because you're doing an extra bounce, it can be very, very challenging. The next crazy exercise that I absolutely love would be a pause squat. A pause squat is also gonna help you a lot with pulling off the floor. This is something that a lot of weightlifting coaches don't think about. If we have athletes that struggle with the pull from the floor, guess what? We can throw in a pause squat and that will help them handle that load right off the floor. It's just like deadlifters that suck off the floor. If they do pause squats, it's going to help, especially front squats. Now, another version of a pause squat that I absolutely love is doing a pause squat and then following that up with two unbroken squats. Okay, so this might be five sets where we do one pause, drive up, and then do two unbrokens right away. So you go, Pause, drive up, one, two. And that's another great complex to drastically improve your overall squat strength. Finally, this one I learned directly from the powerlifting world. This movement pattern is freaking fantastic for getting rid of that 2000 kilo feeling off the floor. This is going to be a box squat. And if we look at someone squatting to like a 12 inch box, sitting on that and then driving up, typically what we'll see is a position that's gonna be almost identical to that pulling position off the floor. So we could do five sets of four, five sets of five in those higher volume phases and then drop that down. We do four doubles and then we might do two sets of five a little bit quicker as we're heading into the peak if someone's still struggling to hold those good positions off the floor. But if you use all of these exercises, pause squats, pause into unbroken, double bounce squats, box squats. Those are gonna be exercises that you're gonna see inside of our app Peak Strength where we have a weightlifting specific program to figure out, does your squat suck? And even if your squat isn't the strongest, typically during those high volume phases, exposure phase, comprehension phase, we'll even program your squat earlier in that training session Oftentimes it might be the first thing that we're gonna do because we wanna bump your back squat as high as we can because we see that as a serious pain point in your overall execution of the weightlifting world, of the snatch and of the clean and jerk. So head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, or the Apple iOS Store. You can pick up Peak Strength today because remember, freaks, if you wanna become a champion, you've always gotta cultivate your power. Peace. <laughs>